ever wondered, where do fire hydrants get their water from? These familiar sites on our streets are more complex than they appear, playing an essential role in public safety. Understanding how they work starts with knowing about the three main systems that supply water to them. First, we have municipal systems, large-scale networks that pull water from sources like lakes and rivers. Next, there are standalone systems, relying on private sources such as wells or ponds, often found in more rural or remote areas. Lastly, we have mixed systems, which utilize both city networks and standalone sources to ensure no area is left dry. Intriguing, isn't it? Let's delve deeper. First up, municipal systems. Imagine a vast network of water pipelines stretching across our cities and towns. This network, known as a municipal system, sources water from lakes and rivers. But before it reaches our fire hydrants, it's cleaned and treated in sophisticated plants, ensuring it's safe and ready when needed. The fire hydrants are then connected to these water mains that run like veins under our streets, ready to supply water at a moment's notice. These systems are integral to our cities and towns. Now let's talk about standalone and mixed systems. Standalone systems are independent water supply networks that generally rely on private water sources like wells or ponds. They are a common site in rural areas or remote places where municipal water supply is not accessible. Now imagine a system that gets the best of both worlds. Enter mixed systems. These ingenious setups use the city network as a backbone, but also incorporate standalone systems to fill in the gaps, ensuring a consistent water supply irrespective of the location. Different systems for different areas, each playing a vital role. So, how does the water get from its source to the hydrant? It all starts with water treatment, where water from lakes and rivers is cleaned and sanitized. This water then journeys through a network of main and branch pipes, a labyrinth beneath our streets. But it's not just about getting the water to the hydrant, it's about getting it there with force. Water pressure is a firefighter's best friend, propelling water up to the highest floors of skyscrapers. From the source to the hydrant, every step is crucial. It's a complex system, isn't it? But it's not all about just getting the water there. Fire hydrants require regular upkeep to stay in top shape. This involves routine inspections to detect any potential issues early on. Furthermore, testing the pressure is pivotal. Without adequate pressure, water flow may be compromised, making it challenging to extinguish fires, especially in high-rise buildings. Flushing is another crucial step in maintenance, as it helps clear any debris that may be hindering the water flow. Lastly, water quality is of utmost importance. We wouldn't want to pump pollutants into a burning building, now would we? Maintenance and quality control are key to ensuring the effectiveness of these systems in emergencies. Fire hydrants. They're more complex than they seem. We've journeyed from vast municipal systems, standalone and mixed setups, to the intricate process of water's travel from source to hydrant. We've seen how crucial factors like water pressure and booster pumps play their part, and how hilly terrain and fluctuating pressure pose challenges. We've emphasized the importance of regular inspections, testing pressure, flushing to clear debris, and ensuring water quality. These systems require ongoing maintenance to ensure their effectiveness in emergencies. Thank you for joining us in exploring where do fire hydrants get their water from. If you enjoyed learning about this, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more interesting insights. For more blog posts, please visit housenotebook.com.